Good afternoon, everybody. Here's Rajni again from Session Piasis Learning Center. Uh, just a very quick one since I'm doing a video after a pretty long time. Um, for all those people who uh, know about us, great. For all those who are new, uh, while I'm posting this on the group, so a little bit about us. Uh, Sashak Thiasis Learning Center is a multidisciplinary place where we deal with children with various uh, difficulties and we, uh, we are a group of enthusiastic special educators and we work around the child and build the skills in five primary areas. Uh, reading, writing, learning, pre-learning, everything to do with academics, then your language development, receptive, expressive, then your um, behavior corrections, your self-help and uh, social skills. So basically we work around uh, the child as a package and uh, help parents. Now this video series that I run is, is just a very humble uh, attempt to connect with parents who cannot come to our center who are probably not in Mumbai or are in far off places and who are struggling with answers because being a parent uh, I struggled with answers for quite some time and then uh, you know thank God that I came across and stumbled upon and worked hard and found my answers so here is my very humble two cents in uh, the same uh, field okay so today's topic is uh, the common mistakes that we as parents and educators make while assessing a child. Uh, assessment is very important. Uh, the most important thing is I would say uh, for a child on the autism spectrum because a wrong assessment actually closes the doors for the kid to learn any further and that's that's the big one there like I get so many parents across uh, Facebook and various groups and they connect with me on messenger and then they they tell me this that you know we uh, he learned up until this point and now we don't know how to take it forward he is not learning their age is growing and you know all of that and then uh, the problem is that they don't realize that actually the child is a much lower level than what they think because the assumption is playing a huge role there and second uh, they don't know how they did not know at that point in time how to assess the present level so they could not take it to the next level so what are the major or the common mistakes that people make when they assess a child the first major mistake they make when you are you've taught a concept you want to know if he knows it or not you're assessing is your wrong body language your gestures your movements your eye movements your hands so suppose you're saying uh, okay give me red so commonly i've seen people say give me red give me red red and there's a red thing kept there so your eyes are already giving away the answer so the kid does not know that it is red the kid is looking at your eyes and the kid has picked up red and then says see wow he knows or else in counting like when they're very young so you're doing okay five six seven so our body language is such because we're so excited that we want the kid to learn and to know so even when teaching we have given absolutely wrong clues the child does not understand quantification okay that this much is five quantification is the base if the kid does not have quantification adding one more or two more or subtracting three from it or pairs in, in terms of multiplication nothing you can build because the base is not there that these many is so many okay so what they say give me five and then they say one two three four and and this is big mouth going and so what the kid gets it he's not figured out that these many are five and I have to stop what he's figured out is the minute he gets to know and the minute he hears dhyan se dekho, the minute he sees uh, 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 okay, what you have to do, you know, such like taglines, he knows after this I have to stop. So you say and, so he picks up one more and places and he stops. So you say, wow, see, you know five. These many are five. Whereas the fact is, if you actually had assessed him properly, what you would have done, I'm not saying, uh, I'm, not, I'm not here to judge to say proper improper. What I'm saying is, uh, if the actual of what the kid knows had to come out, then probably you had to sit like this and say, give five and have a glass or a mug or something kept and the beads kept and 
So if the kid would pick up five things and put and stop at the count of five, then you say the kid knows. Yeah. And then I get to hear things like he's not in mood. He knows how to do it, but he's not doing it right now. <coughs> so because the kid never knew it in the first place. He was watching our eyes. He was watching our fingers. He was listening to our gestures. He was listening to uh, 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 mm, mm, anything. The disappointment on my face or the shine in my eyes. So looking at everything else other than the quantification. And so he doesn't get it. And then we say, you know, no matter how much we are teaching, he is just not getting the concept that five and one more is six because he doesn't know how many is five. How he will get five and one more is six. So you have to go back to that level and then teach accordingly so that and assess correctly so that he can take it forward. Okay, now uh, the another one which is a very common is because I cannot be making two big videos, they don't get uploaded. So in a nutshell, I'm just trying to help uh, or facilitate the parents uh, to understand what are the common mistakes they make. So many times I've come across this. He knows the answer, but he wouldn't say it. My question is, why would a child not say if he knows it? So we say, okay, uh, like in the morning today happened with, with a kid that, what is, what is the person doing and the child says drive. Now technically drive is a noun and for all you know in his mental image he might be associating that picture with the fact that he went with his dad for a drive. So he's trying to say that but he's not saying driving or maybe that we haven't taught him that because there can be 10 things in this. Maybe he means driving but he's not saying driving because we haven't taught it. So at our end, we can't accept the word drive. And that's what is a common mistake most of the parents across board, uh, they do. When, you know, like another another case, and I asked this child, <coughs> what do you know about French Revolution? It's a grown-up child, adolescent. So he said, uh, fight, revolution happened, fight. And immediately the parent who was sitting next, it was an assessment I was doing, said, very good, yes, you're right. See, he knows. And I said, wait a minute. I said, fight happened between whom? And he was quiet and he was looking here and there. And then he says, and the fight happened between British and the French. And that moment the mother was taken aback because the child had no clue about French Revolution. He had finished the chapter. I wanted to know if the child knew or not because I wanted to see how attentive he was in the class or how much was he able to you know concentrate in a group of 40 kids so I asked that question and the child said uh, the battle that happened between uh, France and Britain and then I said uh, is that uh, French Revolution or is that Carnatic War so he got confused and then he's like that is Carnatic War because he studied that in the previous class. And then I said, are you sure? So then he's like, it is French Revolution. So he was stuck between whether the war between Britain and France was Carnatic War or was it French Revolution. The point I'm trying to make is, if I would not have gone into... Thank you. Uh, the, um, if I had not gotten into whether this is French or Carnatic War or whatever, I would not have known that the kid doesn't know. But to simply accept it for that one word. What is this? Revolution. Uh, fight. Fight that happened. And we comfortably assume. Now this happens across board at various levels. So when <coughs> you know you say Aapko kya hua? Yeah, you ask a question something like uh, Ye kaise lag gai? To jula. The child, suppose the child says jula. So we put everything around it. Aapko kaise lag gai? Achha, ye jhule se gir gaya hoga. Even if that was true, why will you not ask the child to say it in the full thing? And why will you not facilitate the child to be able to say it in the full thing? Because there can be 10 things around the jula. It can also be that what he means is that Mujhe kal jula mila hi nahi tha Kyunki wo ladke ne mere se jhagda kiya tha I wanted to take the jula and push me and I thought it was good but the whole thing is summed up with one jula and then we put our imagination to it so stop imagining when assessing 
make sure that you are not giving out any clues you're not giving out any support and then try to get what the child is trying to say and lastly finally that uh, do not give out keywords when you give out keywords then you know the child picks up the keywords and then gives you the answer like another example from another one of uh, my online students uh, where she says that the child will look at the lip movement when I will say is this breakfast or lunch so he will see if I'm trying to round my lips to say the breakfast or I'm trying a to say lunch so he doesn't know but then he's looking at the parents you know uh, what is being said so we have to stop giving up to be able to know that well this is my child's exact level this is where he is so in this short uh, video today uh, I just wanted to point out to the various mistakes which inadvertently unknowingly we make we jump to conclusions we assume we give away the answer through our eyes so all of that we have to avoid and then see that this is precisely where he is and then build on that so on that note thank you so much for listening to me bye bye